Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Last few stragglers getting seated. We got a few stragglers. So welcome all. My name is Susan Kuning, and I'm serving as your host this evening. First, I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for being here, even if virtually, to honor Rabbi, Rabbi Susan Grossman and David Boder and their clan. Rabbi Grossman and her family have been such a cornerstone of our community for so long, 25 years. One of Rabbi Grossman's superpowers is knowing just how to push or pull or nudge or coax people into the Beth Shalom community so each can find a way to belong. When I joined Beth Shalom, I was the classic overworked parent of a young kid with no time to be involved and frankly, no idea how to start. But the rabbi found a way to pull me in and gave me a place that I belong. And I've watched over the years. It's what she does. She helps everyone she touches to find their place in this community. So it's hard for us to let her go. And fortunately, we don't have to fully since she, Rabbi Grossman will transition to Rabbi Emerita status and so still be part of our world. But this is our opportunity to take the time to honor her for all she has done for these many years. Led our congregation, touched our lives and those of our children, shared meals and family joys and woes, made us a little wiser, as much as that might be possible, and more thoughtful, and strove to make Beth Shalom and the greater community better. She has set an example for us all in leading a meaningful and purposeful life. So tonight, we are so fortunate to have with us some very special guests who have come to join us in honoring Rabbi Grossman. I'd like to quickly introduce them and let you all thank them for coming. But please hold your applause till the end, and, and then you'll have a chance. So please stand when we, um, so people can see you. Congressman John Sarbanes of Maryland District 3. Maryland State Delegate Terry Hill of Maryland District 12. Council Member Christiana Rigby of District 3. Howard County Executive Calvin Ball. Howard County Council Member Deb Young Jung of District 4. Rizwan Siddiqui of the United Maryland Muslim Council Board Chairman. Sunira Awan, Howard County Muslim Council President. Rabbi Gordy Fuller, President Elect of the Jewish Federation of Howard County. And Executive Director Joel Frankel, and their staff, Shauna Levy and Susan Stewart. And we have a lot, you'll be surprised, clergy here. We have Father Jerry Bowen, pastor, and Father Ferdinand Ezenwachi, assistant pastor of St. John the Evangelist Roman Catholic Church. We have the Reverend Paige Jetty, Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbia and co-chair of PATH, People Acting Together in Howard County. We have Rabbi Kim Blumenthal, Beit Havarim Congregation and President of Howard County Board of Rabbis. Somewhere. We have Rabbi Margie Berman, Temple Israel of Layton, Pennsylvania and Spiritual Director of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College. 
We have Rabbi Daniel Swartz of Temple Hesed in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and director of the Coalition on the Environment and Jewish Life. We have Rabbi Yocheved and Dr. Gary Heligman. We have Rabbi Phil and Sharon Paul. We have our own cantor, Rebecca, and Andrew Aft of Beth Shalom. We have can cantor Emerita Marge Auerbach of Better View Congregation. We have Cantor Robin Helsner of Temple Sinai, Washington, D.C. And we have Cantor Allen and Karen Rubenstein. Stein. Please welcome them all now. Oh, and I feel like I should mention one more thing. Everyone who is a Beth Shalom congregant, or Grossman voter family member, or personal friend of Rabbi Grossman, instantly understood our decorative theme this evening, the national parks. But for those of you who are left wondering, Rabbi Grossman, along with her family, are major national park fans, and have made a point of visiting one or two of them every year when possible. And then each year, Rabbi Grossman would find a way to take elements of those adventures and include them in her high holiday and sometimes other sermons. So we all got to share those adventures with the Grossman Boater clan. When it came time to pick a theme for tonight's decor, the event committee immediately and unanimously agreed it had to be <laughs> national parks. As a quick reminder, um, Please be mindful of the relatively high presence of COVID in Howard County and keep your masks on when seated, and, except when seated and eating or drinking. So we begin our evening with some words from Eric Gorney, Beth Shalom president. In his role as president, Eric has spent the last year working very closely with Rabbi Grossman and of course, as a long-standing member of Beth Shalom, he's been privileged to experience her leadership. Eric? Good evening, dear friends, fellow congregants and guests. I welcome you tonight to Beth Shalom for our gala, the grand finale of our weekend of festivities to celebrate the remarkable career of Rabbi Susan Grossman. For many years, Rabbi Grossman was not only our spiritual leader and teacher, she was also a mentor and friend to many of us. Throughout her career, she had profound influence on Beth Shalom congregation, on our community, on conservative Jewish movement, as well as on many of us and our families. My wife often says that to be a better person, you have to surround yourself with good people. Well, when I told her, every, every time I told her I'm going to the shul or I'm going to, meet, I'm going to meet with Rabbi Grossman, she would say, great, Rabbi is at the top of the list of people, of good people. <laughs> Rabbi, thank you for bringing all the goodness to the world. Thank you for everything you do. Congratulations on your well-deserved retirement. Please sit back, enjoy, relax. We have a wonderful program planned for you tonight. Enjoy it. Thank you, Eric. We now have um, Maryland's own Senator, Ben Cardin, was kind enough to provide us with his thoughts in advance. So we'll be showing him on the screen. We good? Hi, I'm Senator. Hi, I'm Senator Ben Cardin. Greetings to everyone gathered today at Beth Shalom Congregation for this.
Hi, I'm Sam. Greetings. Greetings. Everyone gathered today. Gathered today. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so yeah, yeah, yeah. long. Hi, I'm Sam Greetings, Greetings to everyone, everyone gathered today at Beth Shalom, Shalom Congregation, Congregation for this, for this magical, magical musical. musical. Hello? I did. Oh, we're back. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that all. We'll figure it out. It worked this afternoon. So, so we'll, we'll insert him later. We're going to skip to our next speaker. Rabbi Dorf is the Rector and Distinguished Service Professor in Philosophy at the American Jewish University. He is one of the nation's foremost medical ethicists and is author of countless books on Jewish ethics. He has served on the Committee of Jewish Law and Standards and as its chair for decades, writing or co-writing pivotal rabbinical decisions to shuvot about end-of-life decisions and permitting gay marriage, among other subjects. He edited, along with Rabbi Grossman, the Halakha le Ma'asesh section of Eitz Chaim Torah and commentary, and the CGLS decision requiring vaccination and mask use to protect life, initiated at the request of our congregants during a lecture he gave here at Beth Shalom on the ethics of vaccination requirements. It is a great honor to welcome Rabbi Dorf, who joins us from the Los Angeles area. Hello there. One minute. <clears throat> Listen, my children, and you shall hear of a time long ago, not now, not here, when things were different, just you'd never know, that women could, women could not be rabbis. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Susan Grossman was one of the first. When on the pulpit of the rabbinate she burst, Columbia, Maryland chose her as a rabbi to serve. At the time, it took much for foresight and nerve. Shortly thereafter, another jewel in her crown to the Committee on Jewish Law and Standards, she was appointed and achieved renown. For 35 years, she has taught us all how Jewish law can help us hear God's call. So now we celebrate Rabbi Grossman's career as a congregational rabbi without peer. As a true mensch on whom we all call, we thank you, Rabbi Grossman, one and all. I couldn't help but do something for you, Susan. I mean, we've known each other for decades and have worked together for many, many years. I'm not much of a poet, but I hope that that uh, serves to honor you. Um, we were, uh, we've been together on the Committee on Jewish Law and Standards for decades. Um, I, I was, uh, I've always been 
uh, enriched by your comments to whatever I've written. And it's always wonderful to hear your comments on what other people have written, uh, because we all have uh, much better products as a result of your comments on our first drafts. And then, of course, your own shoe vote on the testimony of women on um, partial birth abortion and the question of when life begins on the mikvah, on choosing parenthood, artificial reproductive techniques, adoption, and the single parent. And most recently, we together wrote a tshuva um, as motivated by your congregation um, uh, about wearing uh, face masks and physical distancing and other measures uh, to control the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Moreover, for a number of years now, I would say probably 15, but I may be wrong, maybe let me longer, you've chaired the subcommittee on family status, which includes you know, issues of who is a Jew and sex and family life and all, adoption, all kinds of things like that. Um, and the two of us had the joy of working together on the halakha lamaaseh section of Eitz Chaim. It has, been, it has been from the very beginning, not only a pleasure to know you, but really an educational um, an, an educational uh, um, benefit for me, as well as everybody else that you, with whom you've come into contact. And I know your congregation loves you. We've been together for 25 years. Uh, none of you, I assume, is a masochist, <laughs> right? Um, and, and it's so wonderful to be able to participate uh, in this honoring of you tonight. Um, may you go from strength to strength. The For the People Act to reform and strengthen our democracy. Congressman Sarmay. Uh, good evening, everybody. First, let me apologize because I'm going to be running out of here very quickly after my remarks because I think I can still get to my niece's graduation uh, party from high school. It's not, but I still want to be there. You would understand that, Rabbi Grossman. Um, I just want to congratulate you, Rabbi, on the amazing leadership of the last uh, 25 years, which has been so inspired. I've had the opportunity, as many of the, uh, my fellow elected officials who are here tonight, uh, to be here in this synagogue and to benefit from your wisdom and teaching and leadership. And we're so grateful to you. Uh, this community has really uh, gone to a different level. Uh, with what you've been able to uh, provide. Uh, I know that the community is going to miss you, but not terribly because you're going to stay close at hand as Rabbi Emerita. Uh, and I know you mentioned that you're going to be doing some writing, a lot of writing hopefully, because you bring a very important perspective to bear on all of the tough issues that we are facing as a community, a state, and a nation. And we know we are challenged with many, many difficult issues these days. But you taught us so well that a lot of the lessons um, that we learned we're going to carry with us. I have kind of woven some of those lessons into my own approach as a public servant. I deeply appreciate um, your commitment to interfaith dialogue as a longtime board member for many, many years on the Institute for Islamic, Christian, and Jewish Studies. Um, I understand how important it is to bring different faith traditions together, to look for that respect for the other, to lift up your own faith tradition in a powerful way uh, without in any way diminishing the traditions of others. And you understand that implicitly. I so much enjoyed and benefited from the evenings when you would bring us together to celebrate the teachings of Abraham Joshua Heschel and Dr. King. Um, it's 
I now understand a little bit better why you lifted them up. It's because you understand in ways that, frankly, uh, unfortunately, too many do not, how one can weave together spiritual leadership and political leadership, uh, how you can lean into the issues of the day, being true to a faith tradition and being a spiritual leader. We need that in the, in the tradition of Dr. Heschel and Dr. King, and those were some of the most powerful opportunities I've had in public life uh, to learn on those evenings. So we thank you uh, for that as well. And then let me just thank the congregation, because as, as I think Rabbi Dorf alluded to just now um, in his uh, video message, uh, you know, 25 years is a long time to be together. When you first came, I was reading some of the some of the articles that have been written recently um, in anticipation of your, your stepping down here. And when you first came, you had an instant connection to the, to the congregation. And so really the tribute here is to this congregation for lifting up um, Rabbi Grossman over the last uh, 25 years, feeling that nachas about her and her leadership. And I know that that relationship, that strong connection is going to continue. So let me read very quickly, because it's quite long, and I often don't do this, but I felt it was appropriate that I should read this certificate of special recognition. You know, members of Congress don't travel anywhere without these certificates. Um, <laughs> but this one was pretty well written, so I did want to read it. It's presented to Rabbi Susan Grossman on the occasion of your retirement, Gail, after 25 years of spiritual leadership at Beth Shalom Congregation in Columbia, Maryland. In acknowledgement of having broken the stained glass ceiling for women in your career, beginning as a member of the first class of women accepted into the Rabbinical School of Jewish Theological Seminary, and as the first woman to lead a synagogue in Howard County, Maryland. In appreciation for your tireless efforts in helping to lead interfaith coalitions, combat intolerance, advocate for cultural diversity, and build bridges of understanding for your outstanding service as president and equity liaison for the Howard County Board of Rabbis, for your devoted leadership to the annual Martin Luther King Abraham Joshua Heschel interfaith service, and to the Jewish Federation of Howard County's annual Holocaust commemoration, and for your co-founding of and continued commitment to the Howard County Courageous Conversations Initiative, which takes courage. Thank you for that. With deep gratitude for your significant contributions to the Jewish and broader communities, best wishes in all of your future endeavors. Thank you all very much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna try the video one more time. Please have patience with technology. One moment. Yes, 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 yes. Oops, yes, oops, yes. Oops, oops, oops. Hi, I'm Ben Greetings. Everyone gathered here. No? There I am. Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry. It's really a lovely message that he gave us. <laughs> but now we're fortunate because we have a small musical interlude. First, I want to thank Congressman Sarbanes for his wonderful, wonderful um, thoughts. Um, and now we have the Boresevich duo. The Boresevich duo featuring pianist Margarita Lukashkina and violinist Nikita Bor Boris, that's the easy one, Borisovich, is an internationally acclaimed violin and piano duet frequently performing across the United States and Europe. Mr. Borisovich and Ms. Lukashkina are winners of numerous international music competitions and have collectively performed on world-renowned stages such as the Kennedy Center here in DC, the Mozarteum University Salzburg in Salzburg, Austria, 
the Grant Hall of Moscow Conservatory in Moscow, Russia, Shriver Hall, that's at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, um, California Institute of Technology, Pasadena, California, um, JCC Greater Washington over in Rockville, and Manuel de Fala Auditorium in Granada, Spain, among others. They will be performing Ernest Bloch's Simchas Torah, number three from Baal Shem.
Well, that was pretty spectacular. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They've already, like, bamoosed. Um, uh, now I get to introduce Tammy Lawrence, who is our event chair and a Beth Shalom past president. Tammy Lawrence has worked tirelessly for Beth Shalom and is one of our community's leaders. Her efforts have extended into nearly every aspect of Beth Shalom, which means she's worked closely with Rabbi Grossman for many, many years. Tammy? Please come up and share your thoughts. Rabbi, teacher, advisor, scholar, author, advocate, Chavera Korova, close friend, Achot, sister. These are some words that come to me when I think of describing my rabbi, our rabbi. I'm sure she has held at least some of these roles for all of us here tonight. Today we celebrate our rabbi of 25 years. For me, this is bittersweet. These past 25 years of having Rabbi Grossman as our rabbi are filled with so many memories. Luckily for us, she will remain part of our congregational family. I, like all of us, wish, wish her a wonderful retirement, which she very much deserves. And although I can speak for hours about our rabbi, I'll keep it much shorter and share only a few tidbits and memories. I remember when Rabbi Grossman first came. She brought with her a huge amount of energy, ideas, ruach, and spirituality. She quickly made the synagogue her home and settled in nicely with David, her husband, and Yoni, her son. She got to know congregants, and in just her first few years, she used her creativity and energy to implement many programs. One that I am especially proud of that Rabbi Grossman and I envisioned to, and created together is our adult education program. With the help of others, we developed a strong program filled with classes, Hebrew and otherwise, workshops, speakers, holiday and Shabbat programming, and so much more. For anyone who has attended Rabbi's classes, you know that they are popular, top rate, and you will always learn new things. The program has evolved throughout the years and is as strong as ever. As Rabbi Emerita, I'm sure she will continue to teach as teaching is one of her favorite things to do. She and I also implemented the congregation's first Shabbat Across America, which we have had each March for over 20 years. I also have fond memories of a trip to New York that I planned, that, and she led some 20-some years ago. During Shabbat and holidays, we are treated to engaging in relevant sermons. Rabbi Grossman is a true scholar, but she also speaks about what is going on in the world at relevant times, and she relates her own personal experiences into her talks. I want to reminisce about some of her favorite topics and words she uses during her sermons. <laughs> First, how many times have we heard the phrase, let me tell you a story? <laughs> I love stories, and she is a storyteller. However, how many stories can you tell over 25 years without repeating? Even the repeats were good. One of my favorite times she told stories was during Haunted Shabbat each October. Her stories even scared her, so she revised them to be not so scary. <laughs> but Haunted Shabbat, which she created, continued over the years. So let me tell you some stories. Being a scholar and having a big vocabulary, she loved using words that maybe not all children or teens know. After using a particular word, she would say, that's a good SAT word. I mentioned this to Rabbi before, but the SATs eliminated spelling and definitions a long time ago. <laughs> it didn't matter. She loved pointing out potential SAT words. One of our Rabbi's favorite fascinations is Star Trek. In fact, she will tell you she learned how to be a Rabbi from 
Kate Mulgrew, commander. <laughs> Many times during her sermons, Rabbi Grossman would say that you need to learn Star Trek to understand Judaism. <laughs> However, there are many of us who are not Star Trek fans, and we turned out okay. <laughs> I did try unsuccessfully to get Kate Mulgrew to provide a signed book or picture. Maybe you need another hero. As you love Disney and spend every winter in Orlando, maybe Mickey or Minnie Mouse can become one of your top heroes. When you look around, you will see our theme of national parks. Every year, besides Disney, Rabbi would go to a national park or two and come back to treat us to stories on high holidays with the national park theme. Although we will not be hearing those stories anymore on the high holidays, we do expect you, Rabbi, to keep traveling and wow us with your tales at times when you are back. Another interesting fact about Rabbi Grossman that only some of you know is that she likes and attracts animals, although she is allergic to dogs and cats. When she goes to national parks or elsewhere, she loves seeing nature and animals. She loves hearing birds while sitting on her deck at home. How many of you have heard the goat story? <laughs> one, one evening, a goat showed up at her house and knocked on her glass door to her deck while she was davening beer cut. So she and her family started davening louder. That made the goat quiet. It then followed her to shul for services and they put it in the tot lot. The goat obviously needed to hear the prayers. Another time she was away on vacation taking a walk. A Muscovy duck followed her all around the complex until she reached her own unit. She ended up walking it back to its lake. I wonder what prayers or interaction that duck needed. But maybe, just speculating, all it needed was someone to play with or food. Every year a bird makes a nest above the rabbi's door and lays eggs. Last year I was fortunate to see the babies. Recently I heard another story about a bird singing, but I can't remember the details. I'm sure it was similar. Rabbi truly cares about our congregants. One of our, her many strengths is helping people during a crisis or illness. For those who have had the unfortunate experience of a death in the family, medical issues, or other things, she helped give strength to get through those days with her prayers, kind words, and caring nature. For me, I know I could not have gotten through some of my plights I had without her support. Rabbi also helped make Simcha special, no matter if it was a baby naming or a bris, b'nai mitzvah or wedding. For b'nai mitzvot, Rabbi established a program during the sixth and seventh grade year. She would meet with the students and parents and have learning activities during those years. She also got to know students individually and helped them with understanding their parshiot, generating ideals, and editing their b'nai mitzvah speeches. Over the years, Rabbi has led the congregation on trips. She promised me that she would have a trip to Israel in 2014, my son's bar mitzvah year, so she did. And my son joined two others for their b'nai mitzvah on the steps in Jerusalem. She let my son Danny daven Friday night services as well as weekday services during the trip, which I will never forget. Even for those of us who have been to Israel many times before, Rabbi made those trips extra special and added to lasting memories for all of us. She has led yearly trips for B'nai Mitzvah students to the Holocaust Museum and Hebrew High students to places such as New York, Philadelphia, or Richmond for a Jewish experience. Rabbi Grossman is an ultimate fundraiser. Because she truly cares about the congregation, she has been instrumental in fundraising and helping the synagogue thrive. She helps solicit funds for the annual appeal as for our fundraisers and other financial opportunities many times during each and every year. As Hillel states, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? And if I'm only for myself, then what am I? And if not now, when? Rabbi is one of our biggest financial donors to the synagogue. She also gives of her time endlessly and goes above and beyond for the benefit of the congregation. 
Frequently, she has generously given up vacation time to help those in need or work on issues or a project for the synagogue and put the needs of the synagogue first, as she has always done. During the evening, you have heard and will hear others talk about her vast contributions to the Howard County community, as well as the broader Jewish community. As Moses Maimonides said, the purpose of the laws of the Torah is to promote compassion, loving kindness, and peace in the world. Rabbi Grossman embodies these values. Rabbi has been a leader in interfaith relations. In December 2020, Rabbi and I went to New York to accept an award for our Courageous Conversations program, where she has been instrumental in bringing together people of all faiths to develop a deeper understanding of each other. Due to her work with the school calendar, holidays of various faiths were kept or added on the school calendar so students can be off for their observances. When the community needs her, whether due to a crisis in the Jewish, Muslim, or African American communities, she shows up. She says, Hineini, here I am. And she helps rally the congregants to support each other. She truly embodies Jewish values of giving to the largest extent, acts on what she teaches, and is a role model for all of us here. And we can all take pride in the congregation's support for the rabbi's activities and efforts on behalf of the larger multi-ethnic, racial, and interfaith community. Through the years, we have gotten to know Rabbi and David's family. Rabbi's dad and David's parents were part of the Beth Shalom family. I have lots of memories of all of them. Rabbi and David have opened their home to the congregation. They hosted Vatican King dinners, open houses on Sukkot and Pesach, as well as many Shabbat and holiday meals and B'nai Mitzvah Shabbaton. Thank you to both of you for opening your home and especially to you, David, for cooking for all of these events and being a great host. And thank you also, David, for sharing your wife and Yoni for sharing your ima with us. Beth Shalom will always be your home. Rabbi, I can't thank you enough. You have taken our synagogue to the next level. You have added more to this congregation than I can put into words. We appreciate all you have done and given for Beth Shalom. You are simply amazing. This will be a retirement well deserved. Rabbi is not leaving us, but rather transitioning to Rabbi Emerita. She will always be part of the Beth Shalom family. I'm going to end with part of a song from Bob Dylan. May God bless you and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on, any, uh, on every rung, and may you stay forever young. We love you. We will miss your daily presence. We thank you, and we look forward to you doing extraordinary things in your retirement. Thank you so much, Tammy. That was really wonderful. Now, we are fortunate to be joined by Howard County Executive Calvin Ball. In 2006, County Executive Ball made history when he was elected the youngest chairperson in the history of Howard County Council. He made history again in 2018 when he became the first African American to be elected Howard County Executive. County Executive Ball currently serves as first vice president of the Maryland Association of Counties for the 2021-2022 term. We welcome County Executive Calvin Ball to the podium. Good evening. Good evening. Shalom. Shalom. I'm very honored to be here tonight to celebrate the career and legacy of my very dear friend, Rabbi Susan Grossman. Rabbi Grossman's life and career has been one of firsts. The first in her family to graduate from college, 
one of the first female rabbis to graduate from the Jewish Theological Seminary, and one of the first ordained conservative women. One of the first women appointed to the Rabbinical Assembly's Committee on Jewish Law and Standards, the first female rabbi in Columbia at its first freestanding synagogue. Being first is never easy, and yet she does it with such grace, compassion, strength, and humility. It means blazing a new path where others have yet to travel. It means forging ahead without the benefit of lessons learned by those who came before you. But Rabbi Grossman always approached every challenge with grace and determination. Her spirit, enthusiasm, and dedication to making Judaism accessible to all brought renewed vigor to Beth Shalom when she arrived here 25 years ago. Her impact is felt far beyond the walls of this sacred building. Rabbi Grossman is known throughout our community as someone who is always working to care for others and bring people together. And let me tell you a story. <laughs> About 20 years ago, when I didn't have any gray hairs, I remember coming, as the congressman talked about, to uh, the celebration of Dr. King and Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. And I'll never, ever forget the sincerity on the face of Rabbi Grossman. You see, oftentimes people talk about diversity, inclusion. They talk about bringing people together. But few feel it like Rabbi Grossman. Few make you feel it and make you feel at home. Since 2017, she's been an integral part of the Congrageous Conversation series. And let me tell you why a fellow Trekkie <laughs> thinks that this is incredibly important. You see, some of the things that I love about Star Trek is it forces you to have those courageous conversations in a way that's accessible and that's safe, that allows you to talk about race, war, all of the most challenging, scary issues of our day that oftentimes we're afraid to talk about. Star Trek reminds us of the innovations and the things that can be on the horizon and most of all in having those courageous conversations about what is, it teaches us and reveals to us what can be. Now this Courageous Conversations program also brings together members of our community provide that critical conversation about race and religion. You know, it's often said that on the weekend during the hours of religious faith, those are some of the most segregated in our nation. But Rabbi Grossman brings people together. In fact, in 2018, after the absolutely devastating mass shooting at the Tree of Life, in synagogue, Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Rabbi Grossman worked with 40 other clergy members across various religions to organize a vigil. More than 1,400 people attended. We were hurting. We were all hurting across faiths, across ages, across every other demographic group. And there were so many people that I couldn't even get in the door. <laughs> we were out in the parking lot. And often think about the power of that night standing in a circle in the parking lot with hundreds of others. No matter what race, we were all that human race. Joined together by the grief, the deep sadness and loss that we all felt, but even more so the dedication and the reignited fire toward a better future. That dedication toward building that better future that has always been a hallmark 
of Rabbi Grossman's teachings and leadership. Now, Rabbi Grossman and I have been, I have been honored and, and humbled to be your friend for many years, and it'll continue for many years to come. She is someone who will call and congratulate me with so much passion, and also when I make a mistake, <laughs> call and help me grow with just as much passion, and I love her for that. Congratulations and best wishings on a relaxing, healthy, and happy retirement. And now I'd like to present this proclamation uh, to Rabbi Grossman, if you could please join me on stage. And it reads, whereas, you want to come up those steps or which, come up over here. Whereas Rabbi Grossman joined the Beth Shalom congregation in 1997 and has shared her valuable spiritual guidance and thoughtful leadership throughout the last 25 years, and whereas Rabbi Grossman has been a faithful leader for the synagogue and our community, inspiring inclusivity and equality as a speaker, author, and storyteller who champions interfaith and intercultural cooperation. As a trailblazing woman of Jewish faith, she is a tremendous community partner, always working to foster understanding and recognition among many faiths in our community. And whereas it is fitting for Howard County government to recognize Rabbi Grossman for more than 30 years of devout service to God's work in our community, we wish her many more years of health and fulfillment in her retirement. Now, therefore, I, Calvin Ball, County Executive of Howard County, Maryland, do hereby proclaim June 12, 2022, Rabbi Susan Grossman Day in Howard County. When we're in the parking lot, I, I went out when for all, I heard there were people out in the parking lot and I went out and I climbed up on a light pole and I was leading singing and it looked like I was gonna fall and I thought I was gonna fall, but the person standing in front of me making sure I wasn't gonna fall was Calvin Ball. <laughs> Thank you so much. And that is really, really cool. I'm going to mark that on my calendar. <laughs> As most of you know, whoops, I'm still doing this. As most of you know, um, Rabbi Grossman has been a leader in outreach and communication efforts for other, others in our community to enhance understanding and cooperation. You've been hearing a lot about that tonight. Her leadership in that vein has definitely expanded our world. Tonight, we are joined by Mr. Rizwan Siddiqui, Chairman of the United Maryland Muslim Council. The United Maryland Muslim Council is a community organization dedicated to promoting interest and involvement of Muslims in the state of Maryland. Mr. Siddiqui, thank you. Distinguished guests, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, and good evening. My name is Rezwan Siddiqui. I'm the chair of the United Maryland Muslim Council and past president of Howard County Muslim Council. And I was much surprised when Tammy called me back in December that she wanted me to talk about this event. On one hand, I was very sorry to know that I didn't know before that that Rabbi Grossman is going to be retired. 
But then I thought that I think this is much more beneficial to her and her family because we all have to pass the torch on anyway, one day. So that's part of the game. And I was delighted to accept the honor and thank you, Tammy, for uh, this opportunity. Opportunity. So here I am, uh, very honored to be standing in front of you all at this auspicious occasion of uh, 25th year anniversary, basically, and retirement for Rabbi Grossman. I have been <clears throat> able to take, uh, I would say, liberty as a friend to call her Susan uh, rather than Rabbi Grossman. She has given me her personal number all the time whenever she's going on vacation and you know, uh, at different times when there is need. Uh, we have been very closely working together at that time. It had been over 10 to 12, maybe 15 years uh, uh, knowing her uh, and working with her at different events. Uh, uh, and it's not one, whether it is, uh, uh, what do you call, a food drive. Uh, it's a calendar day where we are trying to get some Muslim holidays and Jewish holidays and other religious holidays on the school calendar. Uh, whether it's the election season, uh, we have the candidate forum. We uh, have a lot of iftar dinners uh, at our Darut Taqwa Islamic Center together. She has been to my home a couple of times for Eid celebration. You know, you name it, there are ongoing, continuous interaction with her. And I cannot say that any time we missed her, she has always been very, very uh, partner on that, and particularly on those courageous conversations. Um, I loved myself uh, standing here and sitting some time as a panel member and talking to the folks, uh, and it was really honor uh, to work together uh, with her through those times. I want to salute you, Susan, for your leadership and, and really uh, all the accomplishments and uh, what you have done, not for only your community, but communities across the aisle, you know, interfaith. It's, it's really so much important to know that. I could not forget talking to her whenever there were unfortunate events of you know, attacks on whether it's a mosque, it's a synagogue, or it's a church. Uh, we always would talk, console each other, and see how we can work together and how we can help the communities and how we can really reach out to. She has been calling me whenever there was an incident anywhere in the country on an attack where you know, some mosque is involved or some you know, community members involved. The first call I would always receive uh, was from uh, Susan. So thank you, Susan, for your uh, leadership on that. Uh, it was very amazing about maybe several years back, we had a food drive in Howard County, one of the uh, public parks. We do almost every year. A couple of years had been a gap because of COVID. Uh, and I saw that uh, uh, Susan and David uh, drove into their truck with full of all the non-perishable food. That day, we collected over five tons of food and get, donated to the food bank. And both David and, and Susan helped us even load into the truck. So thank you so much. For, I mean, how can I forget those events? You know, uh, that, that is so important there. You are really, uh, truly a role model for all of us and for our future generations, and hope uh, your legacy will live through. Uh, I see our new president of Howard County Muslim Council. Uh, uh, if you would stand up here for a minute, Zunera. Um, she will be the. <laughs> she will be our torchbearer, and hopefully, will continue working uh, with the new leadership here. And I'm sure uh, you know she will be. Uh, Susan will be involved anyway. On a personal note, I was so honored, uh, Susan, when you invited my wife and myself at your son's wedding. It was an honor uh, to attend the program, and not only <clears throat> learned a lot of. Uh, uh, traditions, uh, but some of the new things which I never had experienced before. So it was really uh, very touching and personal for me and my wife both. And I'm sorry she could not be here today. She was not feeling well, so she sends her uh, you know, uh, regards for you. And we hopefully will make it up some other time. You know. I know uh, uh, Rabbi uh, Grossman was uh, more of a gentle, caring, and respectful person who always looked at the people um, as human beings, not because of their color, not because of their religion, not be which area they come from, but that had been her strength. And she really brought together 
particularly all three Abrahamic faiths, you know. We had have so many interfaith programs over the last 10 years, I would remember, uh, which we never had it before, and hopefully we'll continue that down the road too. Finally, Rabbi Grossman, I'd like to congratulate you <laughs> to your retirement and hope you have a lot of time uh, to celebrate and also spend some with family. But uh, what i like to mention is that you have my, you know my home address, you know my cell phone, you know my email. <laughs> Don't be a stranger. Please, you and David stop by one day and we, let's get out for lunch. Thank you so much. Sorry, a little housekeeping. So thank you so much, so much. That was really wonderful. Um, now I'm going to call Tam Tammy Lawrence back up here, as along with Rabbi Grossman, now that she can actually make it up the stairs there, um, to come up so we can share a small token of our appreciation. Yes. That's OK. Mine, I left mine up here, too. But before that, um, I am just, uh, no, you can just stay here. You can just stand here. <laughs> um, I'm so thrilled listening to all the great speakers talk about Rabbi Grossman and to all who came to celebrate and honor her. I especially want to thank my core committee who worked so tirelessly on this gala. Susan Cooning, who is my partner throughout the entire planning and also a wonderful MC for this evening. I'd also like to thank the rest of my core committee, Jill Clark, Deb Greenberg, Karen Kaufman, Belinda Laufer, Beth Megan, Sharon Schreiberg, Nadia Wasserman, and also to the board staff and the many volunteers for reaching out to obtain tributes and ads and helping with the event today. There are too many more to name. There are so many other people here who helped also. So first, Rabbi, we have... <laughs> We have several citations for you. Um, this I won't read, but it is a letter from, ben, from uh, Senator Benjamin Cardin. And it's a citation from the Maryland General Assembly uh, in recognition of her retirement of 25 years as Rabbi of Beshalem Congregation and for her contributions to the Howard County community. And it is signed by Senator Guy Gazone, Delegate Vanessa Atterbury. Atterbury. Shane um, Pendergrass. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> you can read it. And Terry and uh, Jen uh, Teresa. <laughs> and we also have another one for you. Um, it's a citation from the Maryland General Assembly. Be it hereby known to all that sincerest congratulations are offered to Rabbi Susan Grossman in recognition of her retirement after 25 years of service of Beth Shalom Congregation in which she demonstrated exceptional leadership in promoting tolerance and cooperation in the Howard County community. And this is on behalf of the Howard County delegation signed by uh, Senator Clarence Lamb Delegate Courtney Watson, um, the chairs, and all the delegates and senators. We have a lot of them here. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I, I, Terry Hill is here from the yes. So, on behalf of the congregation, we are presenting you with two gifts. One will be uh, the one gift that we're doing is we're creating a book with all the wonderful tributes you received on this occasion, consisting of almost 80 pages. Thank you. Um, and if others would like to send in tributes 
and have not done so already, the form on the website will be open until next Sunday. Second, we're presenting you with this special gift for you to open. open. Yeah, open. The debate is do I unpack it so I can save the wrapping paper? <laughs> Reuse, reduce, repurpose, recycle. Right, whoa. So, Emmanuel is uh, a very well known artist in Israel who does um, uh, use, usable, usable art. Oh, wow. This is engraved. Oh, okay. That's a Havdalah set? Yes. Oh, and it's a beautiful Havdalah, beautiful Havdalah set. Havdalah is the ceremony that we end the Sabbath with. Havdalah means to make a distinction between uh, things, so we, discernment. It's a lesson in discernment. We could use some discernment in our society, right? Um, and, and so uh, Havdal is one of my favorite holidays, uh, uh, my favorite ceremonies. And so there's three parts. One is that we have joy with wine. You didn't know you were getting a lesson today, right? Uh, the, other, the other is that we get a spice box. There's a little spice box. In it is sweet spice like cinnamon and nutmeg and, and allspice to Give yourself strength. So you've hopefully had the Sabbath, you've had joy and replenishment, and you're looking at the world, and you're looking at the rest of the week, and you're looking at your things to do list, and you're going, oi, gewalt. Uh, and then you take a whiff of the, of the spice, and it, and it gives, it kind of strengthens you with the ability to keep going because you know, not just that Shabbat is coming next week, but that, that taste of the perfection of Sabbath, which is the ideal world where people and the world are in harmony, is possible if we work for it. So this gives us the strength and also appropriate for our evening. And then finally, there's a, a little candle holder. And we have a, a multi-wick candle for Havdalah. And I'm going to read that in a second. And there's a candle in here. Somewhere. OK. I don't see the candle yet. But oh, I got a candle. And there's a special cool candle here. It's a multi-wick candle. This one has two wicks. Sometimes there are many more. And the point is that we can't do it by ourselves. We light the light, and it's our shared light that creates light in the world and brings more light in the world. And so the, in, the uh, uh, inscription says, um, on your retirement, Rabbi Susan Grossman, in gratitude for your 25 years of service, Beth Shalom Congregation, June 2022. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've been instructed that I have to open the card. <laughs> well, Tammy tries to put it all together here. So, let's see. Beautiful card with Mazel Tov. So, it says, uh, the best of times deserve the best of wishes. May the light of the Havdalah candle shine as bright as the light you have given us these past 25 years. May you go from strength to strength with much love, appreciation, Beth Shalom Congregation. Thank you. We have here with us uh, my cousin, who's the head of COGEL, which is the Jewish uh, um, environmental advocacy organization. So I'm, I'm glad that I remembered to say that I was going to reuse the paper. <laughs> and and uh, Congressman Sarbanes, who is, is the head of the uh, subcommittee right on environment. Can you hear me if I'm leaning forward? Yeah? You can hear me? That's a little better, right? OK, so first of all, thank you so much for the beautiful gifts and this whole beautiful evening and the beautiful words. And um, I'm deeply, deeply, deeply touched. I'm, I'm going to cry, so I'm not going to do that um, if I go there. And um, I do appreciate Congressman Cardin trying. And we'll, I'll look forward to hearing his speech and Congressman Sorbanes and County Executive Ball um, and uh, Rabbi Dorf and uh, my friend Rizwan um, for, and Eric, our, our president, and Tammy 
Susan, for all your kind words, partnership, and friendship over these years. And there's so many people here that I wish I could mention all of you. Um, I want to thank you all. It feels like the Tony Awards. Um, and I, the good news is I have more than 90 seconds. Well, at least for me, it's good news. I hope it's good news for you. Um, it's wonderful to see so many dignitaries, so many people I've worked with for so long, our county officials, our state dignitaries, um, our, my, my fellow clergy who we've been with together doing so many things, uh, community members, my friends, my congregants, my family. Um, it's just overwhelming. First of all, my heartfelt thanks. So you're going to have to listen to some thanks, and then I'm going to share some words for you. So first of all, my heartfelt thanks to Tammy and Susan and the entire committee, uh, our incredible staff, uh, Jessica and Ruthann, who every day work above and beyond the call of duty behind the scenes. Uh, but all of you having done. All of you having done so much uh, to make this a lovely evening. Um, and special thanks to our performers, um, the uh, Borisevitz duo, uh, who are beautiful, weren't they? Wasn't it lovely? It, it was Simcha Torah, where they played with Simcha Torah. Simcha Torah is the holiday of joy in the Torah, in, in Jewish learning, in the idea that we are um, constantly rising in becoming better, uh, which was so appropriate. Uh, and we're going to hear uh, Cantor Apt and Cantor Auerbach and Cantor Helsner and Cora, I understand, right? Who's a wonderful representative of all the students that I've had the chance to teach and watch grow up over these years. And I thank all of you for joining us in person, all of you joining us online, thank you on Zoom, all the Zoomers, and sending in the messages, and uh, sending me Facebook messages, and just all sorts of greetings, working with me and supporting me and my family all these years. Now, a rabbi is only as effective as the congregation that supports um, that rabbi. And so my journey uh, began at Genesis Agudas Achim, which is a mouthful, uh, in Westchester, where I also was the first woman uh, to lead her own pulpit. Uh, and it's represented tonight, I thought, by Chuck Lesnick. I don't know if he actually got here tonight, uh, but he was coming down from New York. And Beth Shalom and uh, Hoko are, have benefited from the warmth and wisdom that I experienced and learned there. Our first rabbi and our first emeritus was Rabbi Noah Galenkin of blessed memory. He was a refugee from Nazi Europe. He shared the Lincoln Memorial with Reverend King. He taught Hebrew literacy as the key to Jewish survival and interpersonal connections as the key to congregational success. He's my role model for how to be an emerita as I move into that role, although I hope I stay taller than he was. I have been blessed with two wonderfully collaborative cantors, Rich Walters and Rebecca Apt, with whom I have the amazing spiritual pleasure of praying each week and creating wonderful programs like Silly Symphony, Purim, and Hamilton Shabbat. And I have had the pleasure of working with great educators like Rich Kowalski of Blessed Memory, and most recently, Dr. Nagel, who's here today, who, put, who always put children at the center of the educational experience. My tenure here was made possible by the ongoing friendship, support, and partnership of so many lay leaders and congregants that it would take all night to enumerate. But thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of my family for sharing with me your lives, entrusting your children to me, and standing by me and my family through our happy and our sad times. And finally, I'd like to thank my family and my family of friends. My parents of blessed memory gave me my moral compass and pride in being Jewish. My aunt, Gloria Shears, who moved to Columbia near the beginning of Columbia, attracted by Rouse's vision of equality and inclusion, and once I told her I was becoming a rabbi, started lobbying me to move here. Uh, 
and Rabbi Galinkin also was lobbying me, by the way, uh, encouraged me to move here, of course. Uh, but they're, they're all, even though they've gone from this world, uh, they're still with me every day. And I know that they're in what we call the mezzanine section. I, 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 I dubbed it the mezzanine section, reserved for our guests from the next world. That's a Jewish tradition, that our loved ones come visit us and enjoy and celebrate with us. Now, it's hard to be the child of a clergy person. There's nowhere you can go, whether the supermarket or on a family vacation, including hiking a national park trail, that you really have your parent to yourself. But our son, Yoni, was lucky to grow up in a congregation like Beth Shalom, surrounded by adults who doted and supported him, by young people who are not that young anymore. They're also adults on their own who befriended him. He's an incredible young man who um, is, and that's true partially because of the warmth this congregation showered him with and the opportunities it provided as a teacher, Sabbath and High Holiday junior congregation leader and speaker. And he willingly took over those roles even if they were inconvenient and not what I think a kid his age would probably want to do necessarily, preparing and doing things, sometimes last minute, to fill in, and I really appreciated that. And I'm so happy he has brought into our lives Maddie, our daughter-in-law. We're joined tonight by my nephews, John and Josh. Some of you know Josh, and you confuse him with Yoni. Uh, he's a little taller and a little thinner right now, because he's a little younger, too. Because... <laughs> And of course, Nan is, is with us, and she's you know, always part of our family and a backbone to everything that we do here. Words are insufficient to express appreciation for my life partner and best friend, my husband, David Boder. He didn't marry a rabbi. He, we're married 42 years. He married a journalist. <laughs> And we know each other even much longer because we met in college. Um, he, he always has been by my side in whatever adventure I set out on, including whatever park I said we're going to that year, <laughs> and including the rabbinate. Behind the scenes, what you may not know is that he reads and comments on every one of my high holiday sermons. So he gets some of the credit for them. Uh, and when I'm too busy to read the news, which is most of the time, he reads everything for me and pulls and, and emails what I need to see. And everything I post is something that I've read that he post, pulled for me. And then I say, can you send me that, please, so I can post it? And he does. So I want to thank him for that. He's a wellspring of knowledge um, and my private walking Wikipedia on Israel, history, politics, popular culture, and of course, baseball. <laughs> He has given some talks to the synagogue on these subjects. And most importantly, as we heard a little bit, he's been willingly, um, works hard to open our home to congregants for holiday meals, Passover and Sukkot open houses, Vatakim dinners, Shabbat afternoon meals, uh, B'nai Mitzvah Shabbatones, where we have a gaggle of kids running around the house, eating, playing, making sometimes not so much of a mess as you might think, uh, but bonding, which is the most important thing, and seeing a Shabbat-friendly home. He's baked famous, his famous chocolate cake, whipped up amazing dinners, schlepped chairs. Schlepped means like dragged, and uh, those who don't know Yiddish, and all willingly supported the congregation that he loves as much as I do. My friends, it takes a village to raise children, care for each other, and do good for others. Decades of congregational leaders and volunteers helped make possible everything achieved here, from Aleph to Tav, which sort of means A to Z, from our adult education programs and our social action programs to, to everything that we do. The exact origin of the phrase, it takes a village, is unknown, though most likely comes from an African proverb. The great medieval rabbi Moses Maimonides taught something similar. Jews are obligated to concentric circles of responsibility. First, to care for one's family. 
then one's congregation and faith community, then the larger local community, then the larger worldwide Jewish community. And ultimately, we are responsible for the larger world and everyone in it. In effect, almost eight centuries ago, Maimonides taught that we are to act locally and think globally, <laughs> turning that popular phrase around. And that's what I've tried to do in my rabbinate with all of your help. Most importantly, I thank God every day for everything, including the many incredible opportunities I've had and the many people who befriended me along the way. I grew up in New York City public housing, the daughter of a fireman and first generation Jewish Americans. I was the only girl, as you heard, in my generation to attend college in my family. Girls were not allowed to go to Hebrew school or have a bat mitzvah in my family at the time. I learned Hebrew, Bible, Talmud, Torah reading, had to learn lead services as an adult. I'm, a, I'm an adult learner with learning disabilities. So if, and they're all, I know, invisible disabilities, but if anyone thinks they can't do anything, they put their mind to it, I'm telling you, I'm standing here and proving that you can if you work hard enough with the help of others. And I had a lot of help, countless teachers and friends, including Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach, my co-editor Rivka Hout, and her husband, Rabbi Erwin Hout of Blessed Memory, and so many, so many others. Upon this foundation, I helped establish Holocaust education programs around the country, break the gender barrier as part of the first rabbinic class to include women in JTS, as you heard. I helped create women's life cycle rituals, fought to include gender neutral language in our prayers, which the new prayer book uh, does better than ever, was among the first and often the only woman, as you heard on the Committee on Jewish Law and Standards, with Rabbi Dorf and 24 others, writing and shepherding legal decisions, furthering women's status, gay rights, reproductive rights, and many other decisions in Jewish law. Thanks to Rabbi Harold Kushner and Elliot Dorf, I was the first woman in history to be included as an editor in a Jewish Bible, the Eitz Chaim, Torah and Commentary, used by hundreds of thousands each week on the Sabbath. And all I achieved stands on the shoulders of decades of efforts of countless women and their male allies who fought to win, to win women a place at the table and on the pulpit. And Now such firsts come with the responsibility to bring others along with us. And that's why I'm so proud that our sisterhood sponsored decades of women rabbinic interns, many of whom went on to lead their own congregations and become leaders in our movements and around the world. And why I'm so looking forward to welcoming Rabbi Jenny Greenspan as my successor. I'm so excited, she is dynamic, she's smart, She's heart-wise, and we're in, gonna be in good hands with her, and I'll be there, of course, uh, to help. I have been blessed to know so many in the wider community who invited me or answered my invitation to make good trouble together. As the late Representative Elijah Cummings, quoting his friend, Representative John Lewis, would say to me, there's a photo online in the loop of photos that um, is with me and Representative Cummings at our last creative, uh, courageous conversation program that he was able to attend before he passed. In my first year here, he invited me to come down to DC and offer a prayer to the Congressional Black Caucus. I had no clue why he invited me until I walked into the room. I was the only rabbi and the only white woman in the room. It was a very large room. And instantly, I got the littlest hint of what it is like to be the only one in the room. And I got that my white privilege, which I might be the only woman in the room, but I was still white in many settings. And it was just really awakening. 
And I noticed also that reproductive rights were never discussed. And I asked him why the caucus ignored this issue, impacting equity and access to health care. And he explained the caucus only takes up the issues that everyone can agree on. And that simple approach, which is an approach that we also use in PATH, and we have some PATH leaders here tonight, uh, people acting together in Howard County, modeled how we can work together across various perspectives and faiths and interests in ways that bring us together rather than tear us apart. Together we did this in our early Jewish Muslim dialogues, in our Martin Luther King, Abraham Joshua Heschel interfaith services, in our trialogues, and eventually they became courageous conversations. Uh, the Jewish Muslim Asian Indian partnership that won for the community Eid, Diwali, and uh, Asian uh, Lunar New Year, and of course the high holidays, the Jewish high holidays. Uh, in the school system calendar. And it wasn't easy to get everybody working together and realizing that in unity there is strength. And that became our motto. In unity there is strength and we would talk through and make it work out. Such cooperation helps us maximize the good we can do even as we recognize we still have a long way to go and a lot of work to do together. Representative Cummings once said, you should ask yourself, what can I do for my fellow man, I did, or woman, in the time that I am on this earth? And that attitude is what will lead us to that more perfect union and more perfect world. Well, in Judaism, we have a phrase for that. It's called tikkun olam, repairing the world. And it is a charge that Judaism believes, I believe, is given to all of us by our creator. Now I hope I have done that in large and small ways, helping individuals, my congregation, my community, and hopefully the larger world inch a bit closer to that perfect world. 1800 years ago, Rabbi Tarfon taught in Pirkei Avot, Ethics of the Fathers, Hayam Katsar Umalacha Merubah, the day is short and the work is considerable. Lo alecha hamalacha ligmor, velo ata ben chorin or bat chorin levatel memena. It's not on you, I'm sorry, the day is short, the work is considerable, but it's not on you to complete the work, but neither are you free to exempt yourself from it. We can't exempt ourselves even if it seems hard, even if it seems impossible sometimes. I've dedicated my life to working on certain goals. Some I've achieved, a lot I haven't. I've spent my whole life since college, actually, um, working on trying to build peace between the Palestinians and Israelis. And we did a lot of that work here in Howard County, where they were doing it nowhere else in the world. We got a Carnegie Foundation grant. People were watching how we were working because we were modeling how people can talk together around the country. Um, the world seems so, in so many ways, if you're watching the hearings um, going on, they seem farther off than ever as the dark clouds of violence and intolerance spread across our nation and the world. I believe that we still need to work for a viable two-state solution because both Jews and Palestinians deserve a, a state, a viable state of their own. Advancing civility and equity and inclusive society. I believe in um, advancing women's reproductive rights. There's so many other things, environmental concerns, climate, change. We have so much work to do. And I will continue with some of them, and I pass the baton on for some others. There are also things I wish I had gotten to or been able to achieve here at Beth Shalom or in Howard County, most notably a thoughtful and truly inclusive anti-bias curriculum in the schools. And again, that's work still to do. I get comfort. There's actually his words, Rabbi Tarfin's words, are some of my favorite words. Because though so much is left undone, I can say without hesitation, I tried never to exempt myself from the effort 
to do what I could to help others and help perfect our community, our country, and our world. And as my mother would say, that's all God can expect or expects from any of us. And that effort is its own reward, as is the outpouring of love and kindness and friendship and support and partnership you all have shown me over these many years. And just as I've been inspired by others, I hope I've been inspiring uh, my congregants to learn and live and love our Jewish values and traditions, be committed to the well-being of the Jewish people here and abroad, which includes supporting a pluralistic, democratic, just Jewish state of Israel, and especially when it's uncomfortable to do so. And I ha we have some kids here, some of them are college students. I know it's tough for Jewish students on college campuses right now. I hope I have inspired all of you to seek to understand each other's deepest pain and concerns so that we can stand together for what is right regardless of how difficult doing so may seem. Each of us carries the light of our creator within us. Each of us can ease some of the darkness of injustice and hurt in the world. Together we form a shining presence of goodness that can transform ourselves, our community, our nation, and even the world. I believe with a perfect faith, as Maimonides would remind us, that we can make the world better. That God gives us the strength to make good trouble together in ways that can be a blessing and bring our community and the world a little closer to perfection. Thank you again for this incredible evening, the kind words that have been spoken, the love outpouring, the incredible honor that you've given me of serving this congregation as your senior rabbi for so many years and this community as a community leader. May God bless you and your continued efforts to go forward and do good together. And I know a lot of you do have my phone numbers. <laughs> so you're welcome to call and include Rabbi Greenspan. Let us all go from strength to strength and let us say amen. amen. God bless you all, thank you. Now we have, to top off our evening, we are fortunate to have a musical treat led by our own cantor, Rebecca Apt. She'll be joined by cantor Marge Auerbach, and then cantor Robin Helsner and Cora Kaplan, one of our congregants. They are accompanied on the piano by James Hart. And there are musical programs on your tables um, so that you can follow along for the performance. I think people are doing a bathroom break, right? Tehila told me to 
shiru. Yore te hayam o im ve yoshvehem. Yore te hayam o mu. Shiru 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 la donai shiru 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 shir chadash tehi la to mikse haare shiru la donai tehi la to mikse haare shiru la donai shiru 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 la donai shiru 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 shir chadash tehi la to mikse haare shiru la donai tehi la to mikse haare Shiru la donai, shiru la donai, shir chadash, tehi la tomik se haaretz, shiru. Tomik se haaret shiru. Yore te hayam mamalom hihi mihi ve yosh ve hem. Yore te hayam mamalom hihi mihi ve yosh ve hem. Shiru 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 la donai. Shiru 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 shichadash. Dehi la tomik zehare shiru la donai. Dehi la tomik zehare shiru la donai. Shiru la donai shichadash. Dehi la tomik zehare shiru. And another song will rise, another song will rise, another song will rise. Not by my and not by power, but by spirit alone, Ruach, shall we all live in peace. Not by my and not by power. By spirit alone, Ruach, shall we all live in peace. The children sing, the children dream, and their tears may fall, but we'll hear them call, and another song will rise. Another song will rise, another song will rise, not by my by spirit alone, Ruach, shall we uh, live in peace? Not by might and not by power, but by spirit 
alone ruach shall we all live in peace not by my not by power shalom Machar, ulai inot me chof eladar chof shenahav ve'al hamachshatot hayeshanot yatinu tapuchei zahav kol zeno mashal velo chalom zenachon kaor batzohoraim kol zeyavo machar imlo hayom ve'imlo machar as mochrotayim machar. Yakumu elef shikunim ve shirya ufa mir pasot Ushlal kalaniot ve tzivonim yalu mitoch haharisot Ko ze no mashal ve lo chalom ze nachon ka or batzohorayim Ko ze yevo macharim lo hayom ve im lo machar az mochrotayim machar in spite of gray and gloomy skies, tomorrow will be clear and bright. Machar, we have a hope that never dies, that nations will not need to fight. Sing for tomorrow is another day, dream a dream that's free of woe and sorrow. When it's dark, let your heart lead the way, and Machar will be, and Machar will be, and Machar will be a bright tomorrow. Shimu <laughs> echai. Ani or chai, ushte enai, on nisa od la or. Rabim ho chai, ach gam pra chai, ulefanai, shanim rabot mispor. Ani sho el, humid pale, tom shalov da od antikva. Over mis mor, mi dor le dor, ye ma ayan, me az ve ad olam. Ani sho el, humid pale. Tov shalom do da tikva Chai, chai, chai Ken ani or chai Ze ashir shisaba Shart mo le aba Ve hayom ani ani or chai, chai, chai Am Yisrael chai Ze ashir shisaba Shart mo le aba Ve hayom ani homim yamai Ve leilotai Uve shamai Amur haesh or kam Ashir bli dai Efros yadai, le yididai, asher me'ever yam. Ani sho'el, humid palel, tom shalov down al tikva. Chai, 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 ken ani or chai, ze ashir shesaba, shard mo le'aba, ve hayom ani, ani or chai, 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 am Yisrael chai. Ze ashir shesaba, shard mo le'aba, ve hayom ani shim u'echai. Ani od chai, shte enai, od nisa od la'or. Az kol le'chai, le'chol or chai, u'levanai ha'mevakshim l'achzor. Ani sho'el u'mitpalel, tov shalov dod ha'tikva. Chai, 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 ken ani od chai. Ze ashir shesaba, shard mo le'aba, ve hayom ani, ani od chai, 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 am Yisrael chai. Ze ashir shesaba, shard mo le'aba, ve hayom ani, ani od chai, 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 ani od chai, chai, chai. Bilirushalayim ircha 
בירושלים עירך, ברחמים תשוב. ברחמים תשוב. ותשכון בתוכה, ותשכון בתוכה, ותשכון בתוכה, כאשר דיברת. בירושלים עירך, ברחמים אתה שוב. ותשכון בתוכה, ותשכון בתוכה, כאשר דיברת. ובני אותה בקרוב, ובני אותה בקרוב. ותשכון בתוכה, כאשר דיברת, ולירושלים עירך, ברחמים, ברחמים תשוב. וכי שי דוד, דוד עבדך, מהירה לתוכה. תחין, ברוך אתה אדוני.
more songs for you tonight. We welcome Cora Kaplan. And let's give another round of applause for James Harp on the piano. Nachamu ami nachamu Yomar Eloheichem Dabru alev Yerushalayim Vekiru ein leha Nachamu ami nachamu Yomar Eloheichem Dabru Alev Yerushalayim Vekiru Eileha Nachamu Ami Nachamu Yomar I'd like to welcome Cantor Rochelle Helsner. Robin Helsner. <laughs> Sorry. I like it's the younger sister. Yes. <laughs> it's those R names. You know, everybody calls me Rachel, so I answer to Rachel as well. So, you know, it's those pesky R names. Blame our parents. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Al hadvash ve al haokets, al hamar ve hamatok, al bitenu hatin roket shmore li hatok, al ha esh hamevo eret, al hamayim hazakim, al ha ish hashav habaita min hamerchakim. Al kolele, al kolele, shmona li eli hatov, al hadvash ve al haoket, al hamar ve hamatok, al nata. Tishkach et ha-tikva Hashiveni ve-ashuva El ha-aretz ha-tova Like the bee that brings the honey Needs a stinger to complete 
So our children learn to use the bitter and the sweet and to keep the fires burning in the night and in the day for the soldiers who are returning from so far away. Don't uproot that which is planted may our efforts never cease. Let our dearest wish be granted. Bring us peace, oh bring us peace. For the sake of all these things, God, may your mercy be for peace. For the stinger and the honey and the bitter hand, the sweet. Some of you have already gotten dessert. This is our last time before you're all officially released for dessert. <laughs> and it's, uh, I've written little blurbs in the uh, packet, but we always end our prayers, uh, our, our formal prayers, with uh, a prayer for peace. Ose Shalom. So here's one of my favorite melodies for Ose Shalom. Who se shalom bim rom rav? Who ya ase shalom aleinu? Who se shalom bim rom rav? Who ya ase shalom aleinu? Who se shalom bim rom rav? Who ya ase shalom aleinu? Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu, the uncle Israel. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu, the uncle Israel. O se shalom bim Roma, who ya se shalom aleinu. Se shalom bim Roma, who ya se shalom aleinu. O se shalom bim Roma, who ya se shalom aleinu. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu. Ve al kol Yisrael, ya se shalom, ya se shalom. Shalom Aleinu, the Alko Israel. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, the Alko Israel. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, the Alko Thank you, everyone. Mazel Tov, Rabbi Grossman. Have a wonderful evening. Hello. Yes. Go get desserts, bring them back in here. <laughs> <laughs>